Piper Laurie speaks up, telling a truth that's even more amazing than a made-up story. She spilled the beans on losing her virginity, and you won't believe who the mystery man is. None other than the iconic Ronald Reagan. Yes, you heard that right. Hold on tight, because it gets even juicier. Piper shared personal details, telling how Ronald didn't meet Hollywood's big expectations, even after a long 40 minutes. Something about Hollywood makes its stars do something they'll regret. While not every Hollywood star does something that they wish they didn't, Piper Laurie certainly did. The star actress said too much about her personal life that she wished she hadn't. But it's too late to regret it now. Piper's secret is out, and we will tell it to you. Why did Piper Laurie regret her night with Reagan? Piper Laurie is one heck of an actress. If you don't believe us, go watch her performance in the 1976 film Carrie, where she played Carrie White's sadistic mum. They sure don't make actresses like Laurie anymore. It wasn't just that she could act up a storm, it was her style. Boy, was she gracious, elegant and posh. With her velveteen, whispery voice, the actress mesmerised audiences in their seats. Viewers became enraptured by her delicateness and swallowed up her immense depth. Who knew such a soft voice could move men and women alike with an incomparable grip? Unfortunately for the actress, she began her career with a studio that didn't need her talent. What they wanted was her beauty, and she had lots of that. The actress was so pretty that President Ronald Reagan seduced her. Universal thought to harness her beauty, and whenever a job required her actress to put in a dramatic shift, the studio held her back. Her charm, ability to convey emotions and other compelling attributes as an actress took second place. Universal wanted her to continue to be the damsel in routine romantic comedies and exaggerated adventures. It didn't help her case to get the more serious roles as she performed excellently in these films, so she became a working formula that brought in money. Universal had no motivation to change what worked well for it, and the actress became the comedy girl as she continued working under her stifling Universal contract. Imagine the actress missing an opportunity to work alongside one of the greatest directors of the era just because her studio was not visionary. Surely the actress must have had regrets about her career. However, the shocking part is that being tied to an unfulfilling job isn't part of the actress's regrets. No, not even close. Her major regret was romantic, like her films, and to be fair, it was also comedic. But it wasn't connected to her career, at least not in that sense. Her career only created a pathway for the regret to happen. Don't be too eager. We have got you covered. We'll tell you all about it soon. Fortunately, Dark the Actress got the career boost she needed, and it didn't come from the big screen. The Darling Actress returned to her roots as a stage actress and then had the chance to act in television, which other stars ran away from as it meant the death of their careers. But Piper was a tough cookie. She stared at what was supposed to be her doom, grabbed it by the scruff of the neck, and utterly dominated it. Her appearance on TV shows gave her more opportunities to explore her talent through the extraordinary writing and directing she encountered. Through her stage and TV roles, she slowly stopped being the goofy romantic comedic babe and an honest woman of talent. Then when an opportunity came for her to earn real money, but would have to be a perky starlet, as she was for Universal, Piper did what most stars wouldn't do. She took one look at the contract papers and ripped them into shreds. She doubled on her chosen path and got the plaudits she craved from critics and co-stars alike. Gregory Peck, who starred alongside in Other People's Money, described one of her performances as a series of revelations moving and true. Sissy Spacek also said she is a remarkable actress. She never does what you expect her to do. She always surprises you with her approach to a scene. Then her career got dotted with a series of Oscar Award nominations as proof of the heights she has attained as an actress. Despite the delay, she must not have seen this coming. For Piper Laurie, well, she wasn't born Piper Laurie. Rosetta Jacobs was born on January 22, 1932 in Detroit, Michigan to Alfred Jacobs, a furniture dealer, and his wife, Charlotte Sadie Jacobs. 
The actress had a sister, and the family lived in a one-bedroom walk-up on Tyler Street in Detroit. When Piper was six, her father moved the family to Los Angeles. Did you know that Laurie almost didn't become a star? When she was young, her parents realised she was timid. However, they were determined to help their daughter become more confident. So they got her weekly elocution lessons. These lessons blossomed and set the actress on her path. It was from the lessons that Piper found herself in the jaws of Universal. The studio helped her taste stardom and was interested in making a star. But there was a problem. It was Universal's way or no way. When Piper signed her Universal contract in 1949, she was excited. She was going to be among stars like James Best, Julie Adams, Tony Curtis and Rock Hudson. However, the actress wouldn't have the best relationships with some of these actors. One of the actors she didn't have a relationship with was Tony Curtis, and it was a surprising turn of events as they met when the actress was 16 in acting class. They had enough relationship for she to know he was a good kisser too, but when Laurie joined him at Universal, Curtis seemed a little shocked and not very welcoming. Even though they were formerly friends, the actor didn't say anything to the actress that the scripts didn't cover, and they acted together in four films like The Prince Who Was a Thief and Son of Ali Baba. And guess what? It remained like that until the actor died in 2010, aged 85. Yikes, that's a lot of years to hold a grudge. She also worked with another aloof star, Sissy Spacek, who played the daughter of Piper's sinister Margaret White in 1976's Carrie. The two of them didn't have any off-camera interaction until filming was over. The only time they interacted was when Piper's daughter, who was five years old at the time, came to the set of Carrie on the last day, and Spacek immediately fell in love with the girl. Like Curtis, Spacek and the actress got to work together on the grass harp, and this time Piper was the good person, and Spacek was the mean one. You bet Laurie loved her role in the film. So, is the actress's career just a long history of conflict with her co-stars? Heck no! She dated one of them and slept with him. In fact, that actor she dated was her first, and you could say he was special. He had a presidential bearing around him. The actress dated Ronald Reagan, and by so doing, she did something she regretted. No, it wasn't the relationship that she regretted. Well, she wasn't satisfied sexually by Reagan, but she didn't regret the relationship. Piper only regretted talking to the media about how ungraceful in bed Reagan was, and how he was only concerned about himself throughout the process. I wish I hadn't written quite so much about her encounter, she said. She realised later on that she could have revealed their relationship without the sexual aspect of it. Piper was so embarrassed that when Reagan was leaving the office and invited her to come to the White House, she declined because of what she had done. So, what happened anyways? If anyone remembers Reagan, they'll agree on one thing. That man could talk. He was just brilliant at it. Put him in a room full of people who didn't like him, and they'll leave there smiling and whooping. That was Reagan. This man was able to galvanise Americans with his speeches and led a mighty charge into the White House. But it turned out that Reagan was only that, publicly. Romantically, the man could be painfully unaware. So he met Piper Laurie when she was almost 20 and on the set of Louisa, a comedy film, where she played Reagan's 16-year-old daughter. The two of them hit it off quite well, despite the age difference between the two of them. What's not to like about Reagan? He was a tall, strapping six-foot-one man and could be charming too, if he wanted to be. Reagan at the time had divorced actress Jane Wyman and hadn't begun to date Nancy Davis, the woman who would later become Nancy Reagan. Ronald was respectful, and rather than do anything behind the actress's parents' back, he went to see them to ask for permission to take their daughter out. Piper's mum agreed, but neither she nor Piper knew what the smooth talker had planned. Instead of the date the man had said he had planned, he took the actress to his home and whipped up burgers for the two of them. From there things began to get steamy, and they had sex. It was Piper's first, and she wanted more, but Reagan wasn't ready to give her more. He retorted that he spent forty minutes on her, and that should be enough for her. He even said, there's something wrong with you. You should have had many orgasms by now. After all this time, you've got to see a doctor. That's not what to tell a woman who just had her first experience. The actress insisted she wanted more, and to prove his point, 
that something was wrong with Piper, the actor revealed the amount of condoms he used and bought. Whatever he did, he kept making it worse. No wonder the actress carried a grudge against him for that long. Who wouldn't? Eventually, the two would go on their separate ways. Reagan would continue acting, and his career lasted for almost 30 years. However, his political career took over, and he became the President of the United States. Piper would go on to have a robust career filled with admiration from audience, critics and co-stars, but getting there wasn't easy. She even quit Hollywood at some point. Louisa should have signalled the actress's rise to the top, but Universal saw things differently, and as a result they didn't give Piper the attention her skills deserved. They wanted her to continue to make people laugh, and she was stuck. Universal, being more interested in her looks than substance, began to spread gossip, that Laurie's skin was radiant because she bathed in milk and she ate flower petals. Piper just sat there and took it as her contract dictated. Eventually, when the time came, she quit. She left Hollywood completely as she moved out of Los Angeles to New York City to study acting. Then she began to look for work on stage and television. It was on stage and TV that she established herself and Hollywood came knocking again. The allure was too much for her to resist, and she returned. Her first film in her return was The Hustler, which she acted in alongside Paul Newman and played his on-screen girlfriend. Laurie took no prisoners with the performance. She completely devoured her role and got an Oscar nomination out of it. Then again she got stuck. The kind of roles she wanted weren't coming her way. But this time Hollywood's gift of uncertainty came with a surprise. She found love. The actress met Pulitzer Prize-winning writer Joe Morgenstern when he interviewed her during The Hustler's promotion. They began to date a month after they married in 1962. When the roles stopped coming, the couple decided to move to Woodstock when she became depressed over her lack of roles. In New York, the actress returned to the stage and TV. The star appeared in two medical dramas in 1964. She played Alicia Carter in the 11th Hour episode my Door is Locked and Bolted, and Alice Marin in the Breaking Point episode The Summer House. In 1965, she acted in a Broadway revival of Tennessee Williams' The Glass Menagerie. In the show, she starred alongside Maureen Stapleton, Pat Hingle, and George Grizzard. Along the line, she adopted her daughter and then got a career revival with her stunning performance in Carrie, which got her plaudits. Laurie later divorced her husband and returned to Hollywood, where she continued to act in films and television. Piper chose not to marry again, believing that she wasn't meant to be married. She and her ex-husband didn't part on bitter terms. They remained friends after the divorce. While Laurie had picked up sculpting and has worked in marble and clay, nothing substitutes acting for her. Sure, as a sculptor she gets to exhibit her work, but that buzz she gets from acting is too difficult for her to pass up. Although the actress missed out on a couple of Oscars, she got a lifetime achievement in 2017, which scared her as it reminded her of how long she had been alive. The award also made her feel appreciated. Old age isn't a barrier for her, and she acted with the new generation of actors in a biopic which followed the life of Richard Wurst Jr., who worked as an undercover informant for the FBI during the 1980s. The film gave her renewed sense of vigour, even if playing the grandmother of a dealer was touchy for her, as she encountered illegal substances when she was a younger actress. According to her, those stuff distracted her from feeling the pressure of not having roles early in her career. Still, she understood that relying on those substances wasn't the way to go and quit using them. Piper Laurie, as much as she is celebrated, we think she is quite unlucky. She is a brilliant actress and has the type of sexiness that opened doors in Hollywood. Don't get me wrong, she has appeared in iconic films and also dominated other mediums in entertainment, but with her, there's always that feeling that she could have achieved more. Universal didn't help her career, even if the studio gave her the first taste of fame, and maybe the biggest film she did was Carrie, and even that was a feature film. You have to know that things are not right when Piper took a film that happened later on in her career, to the biggest for her after The Hustler, Yikes, Laurie could have been so much more. Instead, she is just another victim of vintage Hollywood, and there are a lot of them. However, on the flip side, the actress did what she wanted, 
despite the odds. Before you go, remember Hollywood secrets are just the beginning. Dive into more captivating tales by clicking right here on another juicy video. How come Peggy Lipton's bed was never empty? Watch it now!